Now you can see how from a queer theorist's perspective, the debate that we've been having in the churches is actually rather passe, rather boring. On the conservative side, we have people saying heterosexuality is normal and natural. On the progressive side, we have gay voices saying, no, no, homosexuality is normal and natural too. And for a queer theorist, that whole way of framing the debate is sort of outmoded uh, because the real question is whose power interests are being served and what are the history of these concepts that we assume are natural, but in fact are anything but. Well, what I want to argue in the, in the time we have left is that in some ways, not always, certainly, but in some ways, the vision of sexuality and life before God that we find in St. Augustine of Hippo has some surprising points of resonance and connection with some of the questions that queer theorists are asking. And I think that for us as Christians, we need not be afraid of these questions, but we can follow St. Augustine in engaging them and viewing them as places where we can uh, speak to and with uh, our, our culture. I want to talk about um, Augustine's uh, vision now with you. Uh, in order to do that, let me, let me um, give you a, a bit of a teaser here. This is from Lynn Marie Tonstad. She is a uh, professor um, of uh, queer theology and literature at Yale. And she says, queer theory shares with certain forms of Protestantism, and I would, I would say Augustinianism, a suspicion of ideas of wholeness, self-possession, and self-determination. And instead, looks at the ways that human beings are mysteries to ourselves. I think that's right. I think that Augustine is in many ways a kind of, I won't say ally, but definitely a conversation partner for the queer theorists that are at work today. I have a question more about like uh, critical theory. Sure. Um, so my question is, why should we focus on the motives behind people's arguments? Shouldn't we just solely focus on discerning which arguments are truthful? Thank you, yes. Critical theorists will look at something that we take to be normal or natural, and they'll try to, to put that under the microscope and say, who is actually benefiting? Who is gaining power from describing this condition or state of affairs as the, the way things naturally are? Uh, I think I'm in agreement with that. I, I apologize if I, uh, if I fail to live up to my own ideal on that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that a lot of what I find in queer theory is, is not something I feel the need to oppose as a Christian. Um, and I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to say that, you know, if I, if I feel able to discern the motives of a Michel Foucault or a Judith Butler, that that somehow obviates my need to engage their arguments. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think I'm in agreement. And, and I apologize if anything I said was sort of out of step with that.